the high people chronicles we are at episode five and we thank everyone that has been catching up with all the episodes since we started we were looking at the story of high people alongside the ceo of high people that is innocent kawoya and continue to remind you that you can follow us on all social media platforms that is at high people across all social media platforms and also if you have any question or comment uh wherever you get podcasts from leave it in the comment section we shall definitely get back to you but don't forget to rate us uh that does more for us because it pushes this more to more other people so the algorithm is the god in this so when you rate comment and do all that it says that this is so important as it is and then it will recommend it to some of your friends and then they'll also be part of this conversation so innocent kawaya the ceo of high people how are we doing today Ah, uh, thank you, Mark. We're doing well. Yeah, we're just starting uh, this conversation, and then I saw Levin Morris, yeah. uh, someone we really worked with uh, at the earlier stages of high people. A lot calling me, and I'm like, okay, <laughs> now God is calling. Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, but it's a beautiful day. I am happy we're having this conversation consistently. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. We are going to be consistent, guys. We're going to go up to the year we are in right now, which is 2003. We shall, we shall go up to that point. But uh, wh- where we left off is you are into the market, introducing high people to the people, yes. getting to the website, go, you're going into cafes, you have posters at, at uh, universities so that people can go and visit the website. So uh, talk to me about the development side of things. What are some of the products you're adding in as you move by? Uh, what are some of the things that were m- m- of more interest that you would like to build on as people are visiting the website? Well, 2008 for me starts at a place where I have liberty. Yeah. What I call real liberty. My real freedom started around that time. Yeah, you're able uh, to not uh, ask for permission. Yeah, I'm able not to ask for com- permission and I can work up yeah. to morning, every single day when I wish. Yeah. And then I'm having an opportunity teaching in Makere around that time and teaching people who are slightly older than me but who are really interested in the service that I was offering. Yeah. But then having a clientele that I can share to high people every day. I mean, when I'm having a class, the first thing I talk about is high people. Yeah. I'm teaching <laughs> internet uh, and yeah. technologies. I'm, in, I'm using, I'm teaching web and uh, its application. So people should be seeing what we're doing. Yeah. And uh, it's um, a lot of brainstorming and the gamble of sorts. I mean, we have to uh, to talk about so many things and do so many things trying to see what would make ends meet. You have bills that you yeah, have absolutely. you have to clear. <laughs> the status, the server is something. I mean, the same way people rent um, at the Play Store or the Apple Store. Yes. Hey, in the same way, uh, you are paying for these services that many people would never appreciate by that time. But we are thinking of how we diversify. I mean, they, we had thrown a lot of um, functionality, like I said in the earlier episode, that we had done what people call Uber today and uh, Safe Border, having car rentals. And this is a service that we're trying to roll. And this was in 2008, guys, by the yes, way. Yes, 2008. 2008. <laughs> you have to remind yeah. all of us. Yeah, 2008, guys, remember. <laughs> yes, yes, so many years before so many even people that are watching now were born. Yeah. And um, we are doing this service. And uh, as a way of diversifying, we want to uh, emphasize the need of creating content. I didn't mention earlier, but one of the things we thought was very important and one of the strategies that I think that has built some of the biggest social media platforms is because the biggest agenda is driven on content. Yeah. I, excuse me, I once I watched um, a documentary that talked about the Google algorithm and how they had a very amazing search algorithm that could allow them to crawl the internet in real time and get some of the best um, results. Maybe uh, AI is now the only tool that is beating part of those results, but it's not as updated to everything. So uh, in the same way, things were happening and we're saying, oh, we can be able to build an algorithm that connect, connects people, an algorithm that runs on a basis of creating content. Yes. So we are saying, oh, can we diversify? So we created an arm for selling digital cameras. We had to buy domains like bestdigitalcameras.com. I don't even know who owns that. <laughs> uh, we had to come because we're doing a lot of love yes. with high 
high people love we decided to buy a domain called uh high people flowers and then flowers something uh, dot com as well to sell flowers then we had to create a, another classified uh domain called eadeals.com so today when i see people doing e-commerce i'm like oh wait a minute hold up there was gum tree then there was a few others but there was eadeals yeah, yeah, by yes, high people yes. and then we also had to create an independent high people blog and this was purposely to make sure that we create a lot of organic content created by our own publishing our thoughts and allowing people who could support in partnering to create content actually be able to participate now what happened here is you are tasked myself and um nicholas who joins around that time he was in his senior six but he was able to write uh, a little bit so uh, but i was writing a lot personally i could write about 16 articles every day a minimum writing them you have to write articles for digital cameras for selling flowers for selling uh classifieds and yes. all that and then the blog that has an opinion <laughs> yeah. and all this on the other side of things is to help you also achieve some good of uh, searching and optimization yeah as you may know the more you give content out and exactly a little bit of tricky things some keywords and everything <laughs> some yeah. keywords and all that so you need to do a lot of searching and optimization i did my good learning of optimization and uh, i always uh, told someone i think i became the best person at optimization uh, mm. after some time why because i realized there was so much we could do just making sure we create content uh, create a lot of um, uh, articles with very broken english not because you don't know it but because you don't even have a, an arm to edit sometimes you really feel i've written this thing eh? you feel uh, this is what i've written but then you write have written something else yeah so that was happening around the time i mean we wanted to interest whoever we could with uh what we thought could be the real content but uh thank god as we were creating content people are creating content for love people are looking out for lovers people are looking out for people to meet and date people are creating uh their experience and uh, they're giving feedback on the website i am excited i was on the platform and i met my friend Madi, who is in pretoria and i'm happy i didn't know how people would connect me to the world this kind of way a lot of that was happening and yeah. for me that was fuel enough absolutely yes. so uh now what what happens then what are some, you have classifieds you have uh people who wanted to do a ride sharing yes. which is where their apps now it's yes. easy now safe yeah. border and everything uh which they have to pay for this ad yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, yes, yes. so they were ride sharing apps in all this right yes and um so this is 2008. Yeah. What else is happening in the market? What are you looking at that is changing? Is anyone following the taking uh, following the lead that high people took and they are trying to also up their game in the digital space or it was still uh, a lonely place where it's only you di di dictating the terms and advancing and changing as you as you move by. Well, I remember uh you remember I think a uh, UG Extra. Yeah, UG Extra, yes. A Uganda Online. Yes. UG Pals uh music uganda um i don't remember so many others and you, and for anyone listening if you yes. take in interest yeah. they are only about music yes yes, yes. extra <laughs> yeah. was about music yes. shout out to the guy that owned that yeah owned some that, some yeah. yeah and then music yeah. stuff yeah. all that is music yeah there is not a platform where they are trying to connect people at that at that time not one of because them because if you listen to the work that is needed is you have to write a blog Yes. you have to go and find new music you have to then go and write about uh content for valentine's and you have to write you have to keep also advancing and changing and fixing bugs and stuff that is not working on on the website at the same time they they are right sharing services yeah, on the on website high people yes you know around the same time maybe another thousand miles thousands of miles away from uganda someone somewhere in nigeria someone is trying to copy high people and do an ironking i think it's called ironking you've seen that platform um, ironking something it's it, it's, it's kind of, big in film the, uh, yeah. Okay, okay, okay. yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. so so we're also yeah. doing syndication of um of content for nigerians uh they share with us their films and we promote them locally in our market i mean everything is becoming exciting about internet 
I mean, the more you find localized content on the internet, is the more you feel like it's a place for you to be. And what we call the friend's rendezvous now real feels like a friend's rendezvous. Someone is reading about uh, their classmate who went to Makere and they went to Chambogo, but they have not connected over some time. Yes. They don't have their numbers. They find them on high people. Another one is finding their ex on high people. They Someone traveled to Sweden, another one traveled to the UK, and they are finding them online. Another person is in Norway or in Ireland, and they, oh, they're saying, I'm meeting Mark. He's on high people. Yeah. And of course, we're creating a lot of other things. On the other side, as like uh, we just mentioned about the other music platforms, there are really more music platforms, not uh, streaming platforms, they were news, a ghost platform, yes. platforms for music, and they are being created. And on the other side, we are strengthening our effort in making sure they actually give a real backbone for music, create a leeway for creating a digitized music ecosystem that allows for democratic uh, distribution and affordable distribution of music for artists and all that. Of course, we shall talk about that in depth. But all that is happening. And what we are saying, okay, let the next day come, let us meet this person. Now, around that time, you want to get the brand that people think is so digital, become a part of people and become be endo uh, to be endorsed by people who actually relate with the people on a daily. And that is uh, a, a lot of work that we did and we still do up to today. And by the way, as we get into more of, of uh, 2008, in uh, by the time it's 2008 there are some some of the events that you helped promote on, uh, yeah. using the platform yes yeah you help you are even doing as far as promotion even going into sports helping yeah. promote games and did you know that uh, the only blog uh, that was created for ub40 coming in uganda was done by high people you see yeah so uh, that I, part uh, mtn gave us i think about two tickets <laughs> <laughs> for you just to get a blog for you to create a blog, you only had to get two tickets. Yeah, yeah, but we created a blog for probably months. Yeah. One of the best concerts in probably last 25, 25 years. 25 years, yeah, yeah. yeah. 20, 20 years probably. Uh, two ordinary tickets. Yeah, good, one like of the that. good ones. Yeah, so yeah. they gave you two tickets and you created a blog for uh, UB40. We created a blog that could uh, update people that were following high people about UB40 for three months. Yes. A minimum of three months. I mean, getting people aware of who are UB40, what tracks have they created, what are their biggest hits, how amazing are they and how amazing is this experience and for us we were saying let's use these tools to show people the transformative capacity of internet i mean the demos didn't go uh cheaply but they also didn't come with losses yeah in the end they were drivers for doing more and experience too, experience yeah. and, and at the same time yeah so everybody and this is another thing for people that are starting up anything right some of the things you'll have to do and lose money but gain in the long run because you end up getting experience, you get a connection, you get a relationship that you build from there. Yes. So much as the, you build a blog and got two tickets, yeah. probably it, go, it built on to other conversations that we shall get into in the, into the other episodes. But also in sports, you did promote Uganda, Nigeria, if yeah. anyone remembers that game. Yeah, definitely. We, pro uh, we promoted a lot of Uganda, Nigeria game. Yeah. And then we were thinking of supporting uh, the Uganda Sports Federation uh fufa uh, with creating an a free online presence for every club uh having a free website and when we went to them they asked for money from us oh uh, you wanted <laughs> to create a free website yeah but they wanted each, you to... not one free website yeah, but a free each website club. for each club in yeah. the super league yeah and then they told us we should pay them and uh, we were frustrated we couldn't do that we couldn't afford if we had the money we were willing to pay and actually make sure we digitize our football mm -hmm. yeah i mean for me it is tough uh, remembering the people we used to play with i mean they were our seniors andrew mkasa yeah, Fimbo. Fimbo. and remember the book uh, that was published about him in the in the was it in the new vision I uh, probably well, he had Fimbo. Challenges. Yeah, there was a book called Fimbo. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. there was uh, an animation. Fimbo. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yes. <laughs> so I mean, it is tough for me to see him that we have to find him in one kulukuku looking for food. We have to find him very unstable. Yeah, he said he had challenges. Yeah, uh, a while a few years ago. Yeah, yet he scored so many goals. I mean, there are matches where he scored nine goals, and that's not one one match. He was a superstar. He was and, a very big guy. Yeah, but because no one intended to create an e uh, presence for them to sell stuff like their merchandise, to, to sell what they call their rights and their patents, 
Yeah, because so, if you make a, a whole magazine that we would usually follow, yes, and it's it was based on someone that was playing at the time, I, I'm pretty much at a certain bigger percentage sure that he couldn't, he didn't benefit from that. Yeah, because there people don't know how to value the rights and Im- yeah. the image rights and stuff like that around. Yeah, uh, people that are in the public domain Definitely. and how they can benefit from that. Definitely. Yeah. So, uh, so that that's in in sports too and. Uh, we hope we hope they can get that together. Yeah. So uh, g- going back to still you, you also have you have people also did help with Miss Uganda two thousand seven. Yeah, 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 right? yeah, yeah, sure. The so, queens of the Pearl of Africa. Yeah, that's when Miss Uganda was a bit was so much of a big. Deal. I don't these days yeah. they don't make it a big deal that much. I don't know why. Yet we have but pretty amazing yeah, women that are that very time, knowledgeable. Yeah, that time it was being being Miss Uganda was big, and there wasn't social media then. Well, I think, Mark, there's also been this spirit of um, very limited support from local enterprises, I should say. Yeah. Someone will tell you that the events that happened before 2009, most of them really got real endorsements, yes. real investment from uh, the big uh, taxpayers. Today, someone, uh, even a whole kingdom, will go and get sponsorship of $20 million from a, a big taxpayer. I mean, it, it puts down whatever effort that the youth are making. Yeah. If, if you're getting 20 million as a kingdom, if you're getting uh, 5 million as a as fufa from someone, then how, what is a startup going to get as sponsorship? I mean, you, you, you fear for Miss Uganda Pigment and all the other organizations that are being done. Yeah. Someone who has a very exciting event that would become a very big thing for the country, for our tourism, for our entertainment and all that kind of, and for creating job opportunities. But because there's less that is being done in making sure that where value comes from, value is actually put. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's, yeah, I, I, we, need, we need to go back to, because things are like, you would think that because of the social media era now, this should be big pageants when they're doing these beauty pageants, they should be a big deal. Yeah. And we should, they should be getting more, the people that actually participate in and win. But you find that you end up knowing more the previous <laughs> Miss Uganda and stuff. Yeah, than the ones that are reigning now. I mean, there was also an issue with the organizers over there, but, you know. Oh, really? Who is the current Miss Uganda, meanwhile? That's the thing. We voted. I don't remember who it was now. I remember voting <laughs> as well. Hey, I voted we have for voted for everybody. We I, are voting for people. I yeah. voted a friend that is deaf, and uh, she didn't make it, but at least I'm happy I voted for her. Yeah, I'm happy that, I'm glad that she even participated, <laughs> yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah, sure. And... Uh, but it's it's you know, I think we we'll, we we'll learn and and grow. I still believe that there's a time where, uh, for example, when we get into the later episode, we shall talk about like where the music industry was at the time, and what platforms like high people did to and uh, to better the music industry at the time, uh, in terms of creating a platform where artists can actually share the music and get more yes. from from that, and even specifically personally going and working with artists. Not just sitting and waiting for new music and then you publish that, but actually working with the artist to make things better. And that will be in the next episodes, all right? Because this is 2008 and we're looking at what happened of high people then when they went into uh, full ro- a full ro- rollout of the high people market and people get, uh, doing sub- getting more than one service from the website. You have ride sharing services you have uh, household materials that you would get at the time you have valentine's enjoying if you want to set up you know stuff for your loved one finding love at the same time but as well as helping in promoting events and and uh, doing more to create the promotion of uh, uh, people getting involved into the digital era and taking advantage of that that's the high people chronicles all right where you get podcasts you'll get more like this and get to us on socials that is at high people across all social media platforms and we shall be back on the next one but don't forget to read subscribe and comment share with your friends do not listen to this alone share with your other friends that might want to get interested in this because they might be